Hi, welcome back to Enzyme Kinetics and Biochemistry. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. All right, so this video, we're going to look at the mechanism of an enzyme called lysozyme. Now, when you're taking biochemistry, there are typically two enzymes that you look at the mechanism of. The first one is this one, lysozyme, and the other one is going to be chymotrypsin. There are some other ones that, depending on the on which book or depending on uh, the professor, you might look at some different ones, but this is a really common one to look at, um, also because the mechanism is actually pretty simple. So what does lysozyme do? Well, first of all, there are bacteria all over your body, okay? There's bacteria in the environment that can get on your body, but probably about the last thing that we want is for those bacteria to enter the body. Sure, there are bacteria on your skin, but we really don't want those bacteria or foreign bacteria um, to infiltrate our bodies and cause sickness. Bacteria have cell walls. And in the cell wall, there's a substance, a polymer called peptidoglycan, which is basically, for our intents and purposes, it is half protein, half carbohydrate. The carbohydrate is a, is a polymer of repeating units of N-acetylmuramic acid and N-acetylglucosamine, which we abbreviate NAM and NAG. So what you should see in that part of the polymer are repeating units NAM, NAG, NAM, NAG, and so on and so forth. Okay, And actually, this enzyme lysozyme, its net reaction, as we're going to see, is to split all the bonds between repeating units of NAM and NAG. Okay. And so by doing that, it drastically weakens the cell wall and allows our body, if in the case of a bacterial infiltration, it allows the, uh, our body to kill those bacteria, okay, and so on and so forth. This does not act on the protein part, it only acts on the carbohydrate part. All right, so to familiarize ourselves with the setup, this is NAM, this is NAG. Lysozyme only breaks the NAM-NAG bond. It does not break a NAG-NAM bond. It's only this bond where on the left side you have NAM, right side you have NAG, all right? Now these are technically all six-membered ring carbohydrates right here. All the substituents that come off of these carbons I have not indicated for the sake of clarity, but they do exist, and if you want to know what they are, you can uh, do it in a Google search and pretty quickly figure out what they are. There are some sometimes pretty complicated structures. In the active site at rest, we start out with a glutamic, a glutamic acid residue. I say acid because it's protonated at rest. And then down here we have an aspartate, which is deprotonated. Okay? The glutamic acid is going to sit atop the NAM, and the aspartate is going to sit below the NAM. That's very important for the mechanism of this enzyme. All right, so let's get going. The first step is this carboxyl of aspartate is going to attack this carbon right here. This carbon is the anomeric carbon of NAG, or excuse me, of NAM, and when it attacks this carbon, it's going to simply cause the NAG component and all the rest that's connected over here to leave as the leaving group. And as it's leaving, this oxygen right here picks up this proton from the glutamic acid. So now notice you see the glutamic acid deprotonated, it's now glutamate. And this proton that I circled in blue is now attached to the oxygen on NAG, or N-acetylglucosamine. This mechanistic step right here, this is actually just a simple SN2 reaction. One of the few SN2s we're ever going to come across. They're not very common in biochemistry. Aspartate, nucleophilic attack on this carbon, loss of the leaving group. All right, so for the next step, glutamate is deprotonated. Aspartate is now attached covalently to the NAM and basically everything else that's down here. A water is allowed into the active site. This enzyme is actually a hydrolase. Glutamate is going to deprotonate this water, taking this proton right here. It's going to take this one. Notice in the next step we see that proton right there. And the resulting effective hydroxide, this OH, is going to attack this carbon right there, and that's going to cause the aspartate to fall off. In other words, this OH right here is essentially doing a nucleophilic attack on this carbon, causing aspartate to leave as the leaving group. So what do we ultimately have here? We get our aspartate back down here, our protonated glutamic acid, and then this part of the NAM, and then everything else before it, and then this part of the NAG, everything else after it. Okay, so what is the net effect of each reaction of lysozyme? It splits, effectively, a NAM-NAG bond. Okay, 
Now, one thing that's really important, I just want to clarify this because it's, it can be very confusing. Why is it that this glutamic acid has to be on top of the NAM and this aspartate has to be below? What is the mechanism we're doing? It's an SN2. So if aspartate attacks from the bottom, then NAG is going to leave as the leaving group. Why is that important? Well, it's important because notice when aspartate attacks here, it's now attached to the bottom side. Okay, That means that if something else, like this hydroxide, had to attack this carbon and knock off the aspartate, it would have to attack from the top side. Why? Because all SN2s are backside attack. You get inversion of configuration. It's very well established that the NAG is connected to this anomeric carbon of NAM in this way, where this oxygen is going up. Okay? Aspartate has to be below because it's an SN2. Aspartate could not attack from the top because the NAG is going up. It has to attack from the bottom because this is an SN2. You do backside attack, and that's ca that causes the NAG moiety to be expelled as the leaving group. Okay? That backside attack is the same thing here. When this hydroxide attacks from the top, this aspartate is covalently attached from the bottom. Okay? The hydroxide could not attack from this side. Okay? So the hydroxide has to attack from the top and causes this bottom leaving group aspartate to leave. Okay? It all has to do with the fact that this NAG attaches on the upward side of the NAM ring. Okay? And that also means the glut glutamic acid has to be up here. Because for this hydroxide to attack from the top in the second step, the glutamate would have to be on the top to deprotonate the water because the water has to be on the top. Okay, So just a little bit of kind of understanding why the certain moieties, these functional groups, are positioned in the place that they are. Okay, But that's the basics of the mechanism. So what's our net effect? We start with a NAM-NAG bond. And this generally, this enzyme can attack usually anywhere in the carbohydrate polymer. We have a NAM-NAG bond. We do a couple successive SN2 reactions, and we get a free NAM and a free NAG. And what we effectively do is we split the NAM-NAG bond. Now keep in mind, if we do this, right here if I labeled this, this would be a NAM, right? And then there would be a NAG associated with that. And then potentially there'd be a NAM here, and then another NAG, and so on and so forth, okay? Which of these bonds are going to get split by lysozyme? And this is a really important consideration. We only split NAM-NAG bonds. And when I say that, I mean we're reading the carbohydrate this way. This is the way we're reading it, okay? So which of those bonds are going to get split? Will this bond? No, because it's a NAG-NAM bond. But this one right here, this is a NAM-NAG bond. That's going to get split. And the only other one here that I've indicated is this one. That one's going to get split, okay? And so on and so forth, okay? Lysozyme itself cannot split a NAG-NAM bond. There is a way to split those apart, but it's not this enzyme, and we're not going to cover that here, okay? So hopefully that gave you some intuition on lysozyme's mechanism. In the next video, we're going to go over chymotrypsin's mechanism. So make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you very much.